Hi guys! Since so many of you have requested it, today we'll be making this nine-tailed fox girl, also known as a kitsune or a fox spirit. From what I understand, the fox spirit can have one to nine tails, so once it reaches the ninth tail, its fur goes white and it can disguise itself as any human being, so I went for a nine-tailed fox spirit, which is disguising itself as a young woman. I really hope you enjoy my interpretation of this, so let's get started. I bought this quite cheap Barbie quite some time ago because I really like the face mold and I think it would be good for this project. However, I'm going to make a hybrid with a made to move doll body so that it is more possible. So it end up looking like this. I'll be keeping the doll's original hair for this project, so I went straight on to removing the face with acetone. Once the face was all clean, I covered the hair to protect it and then took the doll outside and gave it a three thin coat, the Mr. Super Clear spray to prime it, and then I used my watercolor pencils and a few shades of chalk pastel to repaint. As usual, I start by sketching on the eyes. Originally, I had thought to make this a little more manga or anime inspired, but I actually tried it out and had to erase it because it just didn't look good. I really love looking at anime style, but it's just not my style, so when I try to do it, it just looks really, really bad. So I ended up going for a more semi-realistic look, I guess. I basically used my pencils for the finer or harsher details, and then I used a pastel for more shading and soft look. And once I've done each layer and I can no longer build the color of either my pencils or my pastels, then I take it outside and I spray it with the Mr. Super Clear spray again, allow it to dry and then build up the colors in new layers. I've been getting a lot of the same questions lately, so I figured I'd try and answer some of them in this video, since a lot of the steps that I'm showing you here is going to be repeated, and I've showed you this in previous repaints as well. On my previous video, I got asked how I use my pencil in my repaints, specifically my watercolor pencils, how I use them or do I dip them in water before I start drawing with them on the face, and I don't. I essentially just draw with them as you would on a piece of paper. Once the doll has been primed with the Mr. Superclear spray, then the color from the pencils will, will adhere to it to an extent, and then I can build up the colors in more layers. I just draw as I would on paper, so I don't do anything special, I just try and keep my pencils really sharp so they have a fine point, so I can get the detail that I want, and then I just go back and forth and essentially draw a face on the top of the doll's face. I do think the pencils have a soft look to them, especially once they've been sealed with the spray. So if I want more harsher lines, or if I want it to be a bit more opaque and saturated in the colors, then I'll use the watercolor effect. But I use it very controlled by taking a brush, making it a little bit wet, and then rubbing it on the side of the pencil to get some of the color off, and this way I can apply it with the brush. And this just gives, you know, more precision. Essentially, you could also use acrylic paint instead of using the watercolor effect of the pencils like I do. And I have occasionally used acrylic paint because it is just a bit more opaque. But I do prefer to use the watercolor effect because I think watercolors end up laying more flat and don't look like, you know, bulky layers. Where I feel you can easily, more easily mess up using acrylic paint and get like bulky layers and it looking quite off. But I have seen people who are really good at using acrylic paint in their repaints, so it's all up to you, just figure out what works for you. Another very common question is if the Mr. Super Clear spray is really necessary. And yes, yes it is. You do need some sort of primer and sealant, because otherwise your materials aren't gonna have any grip once you try to paint the doll, and you won't have nothing to lock it in with afterwards, it might rub off. And I've only used one other type of sealant in my very first repaint videos, and honestly, I did not find it very good. It was way harder to use, so for me it wasn't very good. Um, and I found it got sticky over time, which is bad. 
So I find the Mr. Super Clear spray to be way easier to work with. And since it's what I've settled with and what I use now, I can't really give you any other ones that you can try because I don't know any. But I know, I know that are other repaint artist who uses others so maybe you can get that information elsewhere and a lot of people have been saying that they can't get the mr super clear spray in their country and yes i know the feeling if you didn't know i live in denmark and you can't buy it here it's just not sold here so i made a search on google to figure out where i could get it and i now get it shipped from poland so online is by far the easiest place to get it And here you see me use the watercolor effect of my pencils, as I mentioned earlier, to do the harsher lines of the eye. And later, I will also do the reflection the same way. Once I was happy with the look of the doll, I gave it the final seal waited for that to dry and then I glazed the eyes. If you're going to take a lot of pictures, then you can skip the glazing because it does make it harder to get a good picture. For the ears, I cut a little template to get an idea of the shape before cutting out one for each ear from some cardstock and then I painted it with acrylic paint. I then glued on some fluffy doll hair for fur, but you can also use brushed out yarn. Part the hair where you want the ears to sit, and then do whatever you want with the back. I went for a twisted ponytail, and then you can glue the ears in place. I left the fruit strands around the face, but then took the rest of the hair and wrapped it around to cover her ears. I finished off the hair with a few fake flowers that I made by cutting up real fake flowers and gluing them together, and that's the face done. Next we're gonna make the kimono that she'll be wearing, and we have to make our pattern. I went online and studied some traditional kimonos to try to get an idea of how they're made and I made my simple interpretation of that. So if you want to make something that's really really accurate you should go look into it yourself. And here's our three pattern pieces. Traditionally, I think a kimono would be made with silk, but I chose to use this cotton fabric because I really like the pattern. Trace your pattern pieces onto the fabric and cut them out with the seam allowance. Make sure you flip your pattern pieces to get the opposite side. I didn't have too much of this fabric left and because of a cutting mistake, I had to sew one of the front pieces together so it had a panel in order to get the proper shape. But if you don't mess up, then you don't have to do that. Place the back piece right sides up and take the two front pieces and place them in the proper place right sides down and then sew together by the shoulders. Then you want to sew on the sleeves. Fold 
fold up and hem this little loose hanging part of the sleeve before sewing down the side seams. Then sew the sleeves together like so, leaving a little opening at the top so the hand can pop out and still leaving the piece we hemmed previously open. Then fold up and hem the edge of the sleeve and also the bottom of the kimono. Then I cut away the seam allowance from the edges of the kimono and also around the neck since we're going to be finishing those edges off with a proper collar. Once you measure it all around the edge, add a bit for seam allowance and cut this length out of a long strip of fabric and then you're going to fold it up like so to make the collar. Pin the raw edge of the kimono inside the collar like so and sew it on with really small stitches. And that's our basic kimono done. For the waistband I'll be using this shiny satin but using the back side of it to make it a little less shiny. Cut out a strip for the waistband, fold it in half and sew along the edge and then turn it right sides out. For the undergarment I went through the same steps again and sewed an entirely white kimono to go underneath. For some simple sandals I took a popsicle stick and cut it down to size, gluing two smaller pieces of stick to the bottom. Then I took some black ribbon and used this for the straps. Now for the tails. I took some wire and bended it and twisted it together to form each of the nine tails. Measure out where you need the tail to sit on the doll and then make a small hole so we can glue it in later. I just used my X-Acto knife to kind of drill it out. Then I covered each tail in masking tape to give it a smoother surface and then painted it white with acrylic paint. Going back to the same doll here we use for the ears, you're going to take this and glue it in section to each tail until they're completely covered. I like the thought of this being a younger nine-tailed fox as if it's only just got its ninth tail and turned white so it had a bit of residue left in its fur so therefore I brushed on a bit of reddish chalk pastel to the ends. Now it's time to put the kimono on the doll. I used a pin to keep it in place while I tied the band. I don't know any of the traditional knots you would use so I just tied it and tucked in the ends. Then you want to feel out for the hole we made previously, cut a little slit in the kimonos and then glue the tail in place. Then you can assemble the rest of the doll and we're ready. 
And here's our finished nine-tailed fox. I really hope you enjoyed my take on this, and I really had a lot of fun with the details of this character. Thank you guys so much for watching, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in another one real soon. Bye!